Hey guys, and welcome to another Gumpla TV review. This time we are looking at the high grade RX78 GP01 FB kit. Now this kit isn't exactly new. In fact, it came out in the year 2000. So you might be wondering why we're looking at such an old kit. Well, Bandai hasn't been releasing much in these last couple of weeks. So we figured this is a great opportunity to look at our, uh, our backlog and to spotlight some kits that we've never done on this show before. I happened to come across this one in our warehouse and uh, I really, really like this series, so I figured I'd give it a shot. This mobile suit is from Gundam 0083 Stardust Memory, which uh, is one of my favorite series from Universal Century. Uh, it's an OVA, I think it's uh, 12 episodes. It's definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen it before. So the ARC-78 GP-01 is kind of a, uh, I guess the best word is spin-off of the original RX-78 Gundam. The uh, main character and pilot in this series, uh, Ko Uraki, pilots the Gundam GP-01. But in the show, this basically gets a upgrade to be fitted for space. The original GP-01 had a different uh, shoulders and had different leg designs. But this one has an upgrade that has a bit more thrusters and is a bit more fitted for maneuvering in space. But enough about that. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. I won't spoil or anything. But uh, let's look at what's in the box. So you have five plastic runners and two poly caps. You also get a sticker sheet with five different stickers. Two for the legs, two for the shield, and one for the eyes. Nothing too complicated here. Roughly the same amount of pieces that you would see in a high grade these days, but I would definitely say there's more poly caps and some of these pieces are larger than you would expect in something newer. Fully assembled, you have your Gundam GP-01 FB. You have the core fighter. You have a beam rifle, a beam saber, and three types of hands, two fists, and one that is a trigger finger hand. You also get a shield. So let's start off with the articulation. Uh, first with the head, you can move the head 360 degrees, but this neck is not on a double joint like you see on a lot of newer kits. So you don't get a whole lot of range of motion up and down, but left to right is just fine. The arms and shoulders rotate 360 degrees and there's a flap on the shoulders that moves up and down and the arms have a good range of motion at the shoulders. At first, it looks like the shoulders don't move back and forward that much, but you can remove the peg on the arm a little bit out, and this will give you a bit more range of motion this way. The elbows are not double jointed. They are single jointed, so you only get about a 90 degree angle here, and you get a decent amount of motion on the wrists. You get a little bit of movement at the waist, but you don't get any side to side motion on the abdomen, either forward and backwards or left to right. For the skirt armor, the front skirt does move up and down, but the side armors only have a slight up and down motion, but do not move left and right. And the back skirt armor does not move at all. The thrusters on the back of the backpack also have some slight up and down motion as well. The legs at the hip have a pretty decent amount of motion. So you can do some pretty good standing poses here, but the knees are only single jointed and move a little bit over 90 degrees. At the base of the leg, you have these two flaps that move up and down as well as two joints at the ankles so you can move them left and right and backwards and forwards pretty well. In addition, the backpack has these extra little thruster pods. These can move up and down and left and right and have a pretty good amount of motion. The beam sabers on the back here actually are not removable. These just stay as they are and you have a separate beam saber for putting it in the hand. The beam saber does not come with a typical clear part that you're used to these days. This is one solid white piece of plastic and you're probably going to need to paint it if you want this to look good. Either that or you could try to steal one of these off of another kit. The shield comes with an adapter peg that goes into the back of the arm and this has a decent amount of motion. There's a handle here as well that you could put through the hand if you'd like. You also have a beam rifle. The scope on this moves up and down a little bit as well as the handle moves left to right. The core fighter does not have any articulation on it, uh, except for the thrusters move up and down a little bit. But other than that, this is more of just a display piece. A little extra bonus, I think. I was kind of surprised this was even in the kit, so that's kind of good. Now, it might be unfair to compare this to some newer high grades, but I figure this was a perfect opportunity to see how far we've come in two decades with these kits. Uh, so looking at this kit, some of the things that you might have issues with is, or are rather, the color separation here is just not there. Uh, some of the notable areas are on the shield. This is just one big slab of plastic in the front and you have two large blue stickers to 
give you some color separation there. In addition, the beam rifle does not have a red piece on the scope. There are no stickers for the cameras on the head and places such as the thrusters on the chest here are supposed to be gray and red, but they are just one solid yellow piece here as well as the little V crest on the chest. This is just solid blue. There's no extra piece here. There's also some gray details on the skirt armor as well as the flaps on the legs that are supposed to be gray, but they're just solid white here. The thrusters on the shoulders are also supposed to be gray and these are just blue. The sticker on the eyes does not look all that great. Something about it's a little bit wonky. I think it's just not as long as it needs to be to cover the face in its entirety. I bet you if you painted this, it would look much, much better. There's also some sensors on the shoulders here that also would need to be painted green. To be fair though, for a kit that's 20 years old now, it does hold up a lot better than I was expecting. This thing still has a really good amount of articulation and you could do some pretty cool poses with it. In addition, the core fighter was a bonus that I was not expecting in the box. And just overall, I really like the design of this mobile suit anyway. Now the question is, given the age of this kit, who would you recommend this to? Uh, well, obviously fans of 0083 for sure, but also if you're just looking for a cheap, simple kit uh, to practice painting on, I think this would be a really cool idea. since. It's not too expensive. If you mess up, it's not a big deal. Even the smallest amount of paintwork on this would make it look a lot better. So even a little bit of effort would stand out immediately. If you are looking for something a bit more snapped together and it looks good as it is, uh, I would say go for the real grade version of this kit. Uh, that came out, I think in 2013. So that is the same scale, but it has a lot more detail to it and it's a lot more complicated. So if you're looking for something that looks good right out of the box, check that one out. But if you're looking for something that would make a really good beginner's kit for painting, definitely look at this one. But yeah, that's it for me on this episode of Gunpla TV, and I will catch you next time. Yeah.